Hello, hello. So chat GPT and advances in, A, in AI are uh, around. And uh, recently there are more and more stories about students who are using this technology to write their papers. And of course, that's not the point uh, to get students to use the technology. Uh, it is cheating. And the question is, what can we do uh, about that? And when I was uh, thinking about this, it, I, I was reminded about uh, one of the first uh, courses I gave and my approach to testing, which I think it's GP, chat GPT immune. So here's the story. Uh, so this was a class with about 40 some students. And on the first meeting of the semester, I gave them 50 essay questions. I say, here are 50 essay questions. Um, these are the questions that would appear on the final, uh, just so you know. And the questions were phrased in such a broad term that my thought was that if uh, students could answer them, uh, they, they deserve a good grade. You know, usually when we think about grade, we ask ourselves, what is a grade for? Is it to grade the students? Is it to motivate them? Is it to teach them? Uh, the reality is that all of those are uh, different goals for grading system, but mostly I care about learning. So, you know, do I care how accurate the grade is? Maybe a little less. Do I care about the students would learn? Uh, yes. Do I care about motivation? Absolutely. So for me, it's more of a tool for motivation and learning than grading, than uh, a desire to, to, to rank the students in some way. So, so I said, here's 50 questions. Um, this, this is it. That's, that's your final. If you master those 50 questions, you'll be, uh, you'll be fine. Um, so, and and <laughs> now I, I further increased the motivation. Uh, how did I do that? I said, during the exam, I will read a question. I will read randomly the name of one student from the class. That student would stand up and orally answer that question. Now think about what that does. Instead of being able to hedge, uh, people had to know each, each question. You can't say, oh, you know, I'll know all the, um, all the questions about 80%. No, 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 you need to really know uh, the questions. Uh, plus the stress of answering orally uh, in front of everybody is increasing. And indeed it worked very well. I mean, the, the students were, because I gave it to them on the second class, uh, they spent the whole semester in the library. A study group, um, discussions, it was, it was really amazing to, to see. Now, of course, with a system like this, there's a downside. And the downside is the student would say, oh, I deserve a different grade. You gave me whatever, 78, but I deserve 82. So I added another component. I said, after you stand up, give your answer and sit down, I will ask you what grade you deserve. I will write down what grade I think you deserve. And then you will say what you think you deserve. And if you think that you deserve, if, you, if the grade that you give is up to seven points above what I said, then you get the grade you chose. But if it's below, you get my, my grade. So what I did with that incentive is to basically give students the incentive. First, I want them to be on the record of what they deserve. And the second thing is I wanted them to have an incentive to slightly exaggerate their performance. Why? Because if somebody said, oh, I deserve 85, then they come back, can come back, can't come back later and say, oh, yeah, I think I deserve 90. No, you just said you deserve 85. You had the incentive to exaggerate, so you thought you, you deserve less than that <laughs> in reality. Um, so anyway, so that was the my approach. And what is why is this... Um, AI immune uh, because people have to know the, the test is not digital. It's uh, in person in front of uh, lots of people. Um, now, this is not just about reducing the probability of cheating. I think it's actually a good model. I think it was a model that created motivation. It was a model that created uh, more learning. And I think the grading was perfectly fine at the end. It was kind of like a little celebration 
um, of the exam. And, and by the way, because all the students were there for all the questions, everybody learned something from, from other people. So that was, that was good as well. So, you know, we, we think about artificial intelligence as threatening our way of living, but in some, in some places, I think that what we have now is far from ideal, like exams. And maybe this would give us a push uh, to work a little harder and come back with better solutions, not just because of technology, better overall. And this exam, I think, is one example of that. Okay, bye for now.